When people usually visit the big island, they go to the Kailua Kona side. I did not. I'm not really a trend follower, I'm a trendsetter, but no one really follows the trends that I make anyway, so. I decided to embrace adventure and ended up in Hilo for a week. Now, did I do my research? Not really. I'm like the balls to the wall type of guy. But what I did do is document everywhere I ate in Hilo. And there are spots that you don't want to miss. So this is everything I ate in Hilo. So I landed in Hilo, got my shit together, and got my rental car. Lo and behold, because I didn't do my research, I didn't know that nothing's really open past 4pm. Everything's pretty much closed. You might be thinking why, but the sun rises at 6am and so a lot of places just open once the sun rises. And it does start getting dark between 4 and 5 so people are ending their days. So me being a hungry boy at 6pm, the only thing that was really open was the supermarket. Honestly. I'm always down, I'm always excited to check out a foreign supermarket or just a supermarket somewhere I've never been to before because there's so much new stuff that they don't sell at my local grocery store. Fair to say I was pretty disappointed in my haul and this is what it looked like. Hello food vlog, just a quick update. I did go grocery shopping but the haul of food for tonight is a poke bowl that is not very good, I'll be honest. My expectations were a little too high, but the fish market part of the grocery store was already closed. So I just got like a, an old one or when they were like, they wrapped up and were trying to sell after the fact. The fish is okay, the rice is not good. So that's kind of disappointing. And I know I'm gonna find better poke while I'm here. So I don't even know if I really want this. Luckily, I just got a Caesar salad on the side as well, just to like, fill myself up. A lot of things close early. Like most of the restaurants that I passed were not open unless they were fast food restaurants like Taco Bell. So the food part of this like kilo trip is not really going to start until tomorrow when things are actually open and I actually have a chance to start exploring a little more. So very excited for that but we're just keeping it plain and simple with some salad. Oh strawberry guava drink is the shit. So fair to say, a pretty sad day one. And you know, the day only lasted from 6 to midnight, so it wasn't even a full day. But I had to make it up on day two. I wanted my Hilo experience to be good, so I ended up exploring the downtown area. Now they do have a farmer's market in the downtown area open every day from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And so I decided to check that out. There's not a whole lot of food options, but there's a lot of fresh fruit, fresh juices, teas, and other things like that. Now the humidity there was zapping all of the water out of my system so I decided to get some juice to freshen it up and this lily koi juice was pretty freaking good I do have to say 4.5 out of 5 stars would be 5 out of 5 it was a little expensive gonna be honest but very very good and then I wanted to make up for not getting enough poke on Maui when I was staying there and there was a fish market very close to where I was staying which ended up becoming one of the highlights of the trip it's called Suisse and Fish Market and you have to make sure to get there at the appropriate time because they're only open for a lunch period basically. But I do have to say the spicy mayo sauce that they make for their poke is divine. Mm. <laughs> so good. Note to self, even if you're in Hawaii, don't buy like the old grocery store poke, you know? This might be my staple like lunch for the rest of the time here. Although I know for the sake of the food vlog, I have to try other things too. But I think I have to get this one again. This is the uh, spicy ahi. Yeah, this throws the grocery store poke bowl out of the water 100%. You gotta make sure to bring a mask though because they're still a little strict on mask requirements but I do have to say it's 100% worth it. Make sure to go to this place. And then it was already dinner time and my stupid ass was still thinking oh maybe it was a fluke that everything was closed by 6 p.m. when I first got here. Obviously that's just how they run things. So I was scrambling to just find a place to eat around 6 or 7 p.m. Now I feel like Kilo and the Big Island in general has more Japanese and Asian influence than Maui does. Just kind of the feel that I got from driving around and interacting with people. So I wanted to see if the raw ramen lived up to Japanese standards as well. I went to Tonkotsu Ramen Tetsumen and the interior was looking very Japanese. The ordering system seemed pretty on par to Japanese style too. 
So I was getting pretty hopeful. Now I do have to say for reference that I'm a self-proclaimed ramen connoisseur of sorts. Like I'm really picky with my ramen after living in Japan. So even what's considered good in the Bay Area, it's usually not up to standard of my liking. And I tend to avoid tonkotsu ramen because the broth is usually a lot more flavorful and a lot more palatable for Americans because of its saltier flavor. If you ask me, I feel like a shio or a shoyu is usually a little more lighter and more pleasant. So with that being said, this ramen didn't necessarily tickle my stomach in the way that I would have liked it to, but I do think it's pretty comparable to ramen in the Bay Area at least. The atmosphere though is nice and they do have like booth sections for solo travelers like me, so it did feel more homey that way. But my ramen loving ass was not impressed. And so to wash away my ramen disappointments, I ended up finding a boba place. Luckily there are a few boba places in the area because it's in the same area as the University of Hilo and young people love their boba boba drinks. You ain't gonna find any boba in Maui unfortunately so. And once again it was morning already and I decided to get out a little bit earlier and try a nearby cafe. I decided to take a walk to a coffee shop because I haven't had a good breakfast basically my whole trip. Um, so we're gonna change that and we're gonna try and get like a latte or something too. I went to the Sip and Siren and the vibes were very cool. I got a breakfast croissant sandwich and a matcha latte with Hold the applause. Macadamia nut milk. So I got macadamia nut milk in my drink for the very first time. And this is awesome. It gives the drink like a whole new flavor. It's a matcha latte, by the way. I don't know, this might be my new thing. I don't see like coffee shops in America really doing macadamia nut milk, so... It's just like different and interesting. And it makes the drink a lot sweeter, I think. Or maybe they just put extra sugar in it. I don't really know, but I'm loving it. And that meal filled me up for a day of adventure. I ended up going to a rainforest conservation area and then visited the Bamkuhen farm, which I'm going to make a separate video about because it was a great experience. A quick summary on that, Bamkuhen is a German cake, but it got very famous in Japan. So the farm that I visited makes Bamkuhen cakes, but with traditional Hawaii flavors. Safe to say, super fun, super great experience, and the cakes are great. There's gonna be more about that in a separate video, so stay tuned for that. And then later in the evening, I met up with a friend. We went to Cafe Pesto, which has really good pizza, really good pasta, with some Hawaiian flavors in that as well. Didn't get too many clips of that because I was with a friend and I always get distracted whenever I'm with friends, but I had a really good Hawaiian pizza with pulled pork and pineapple on it and highly recommend going here as well. Fast forward to Wednesday and this is actually the start of the prime time in order to go to a lot of restaurants because a lot of restaurants are only open from Wednesdays to Saturdays. And on top of that, a lot of the restaurants I wanted to go to were only open from 11 to 4 too. So Wednesday through Saturday, 11 to 4, there's a lot of constraints that are going on. But this was a Japanese place that does take out bentos and take out sushi and the sign was in Japanese. So you know I had to try it, not just for me, but for all you as well. Nippon Ichiban! This place is called Kitchen Umeko, written in katakana. I ended up getting a chidashi bowl with a spicy salmon and a teriyaki tuna. And I do have to say, thoroughly impressed. Mm. So the teriyaki one is actually cooked through, and then the spicy is just sashimi. Oh, the sashimi. Oh, wow. That's pretty spicy too, but the sashimi is so good. They're both really good. The umami from both are insane. Super authentic too. Like the sign is in Japanese, so like, that makes me just feel like it's really authentic. Doesn't mean very much because it's in katakana anyways, but just FYI, this place is only open from 10 to two, like Wednesday through Saturday and um, there's no seating, so it's just like a takeout place, but they have everything lined up for you to just buy and stuff. I think it's even better that way, because now I want to come back to this place for sure. Another place that has time constraints, but you need to visit is Two Ladies Kitchen, and they make some fantastic mochi. My favorite was, of course, 
the lily koi. I think the thing about this mochi is the texture, the freshness, and it's just superb. Expect a bit of a wait because they do make it fresh, so make sure to allot enough time in your day to check this place out. But then I was feeling a little guilty with the choices of food that I've been going with because I felt like it was just not Hawaiian enough. And one thing that I didn't have throughout the whole trip so far was shaved ice. In the downtown area, there is a place called Kula Shaved Ice, so I ended up trying that. Now, this is probably a hot take, but I wasn't that impressed with Hawaiian shaved ice. And you're probably thinking, how have you never had shaved ice before? Shaved ice is the shit. It's great. But honestly, I'm feeling gelato more than shaved ice. And I think my expectations were a little off because I was feeling like it was gonna be like Japanese shaved ice, Korean shaved ice, where it's like snow. It's very thinly shaved. They put a lot of toppings on it, like matcha or mochi or red bean and it's drizzled in condensed milk but proper hawaiian shaved ice is much more syrupy they might have like a coconut foam on top like this one did but the texture of the ice just kind of got to me it wasn't what i was feeling so yeah i still recommend people getting it but it's not gonna be like your traditional Korean or Japanese shaved ice, which is better in my opinion. Sorry, not sorry. So then my trip was starting to end and there were so many of those restaurants only open from Wednesday to Saturday. So I really had to push through and start crossing those off my list as quickly as I could. One of these restaurants is Aloha Mondays. This is also a takeout joint with kind of weird hours. They have a rotating menu, but what I like is it has a lot of fresh, cool, healthy options in my opinion. Of course, my eye immediately gravitated towards the Japanese curry, so I decided to try that. Okay, I wanted to do a quick review of the food uh, while I'm in my car, while my phone actually has a little battery because it's slowly dying. I got the kabochikare at uh, Aloha Mondays. It's tofu based, which is nice. So we're gonna do a little reveal here. It's hot as F. Let's just take a look at that. Can you see the steam off of this thing? Oh my gosh. I wouldn't say this is on the cheap size, but look at the portion size. I feel like the portion size is amazing. Like everything looked pretty amazing, but I was really like feeling in a curry mood. So I feel like maybe I should just do a little taste test now just to, just to see how it is, right? Itadakimasu. Mm. Tofu's good, we got what? Brussels sprouts, let's go. Wow, the Brussels sprouts are really good. Once you dig deep into it, the curry's are really nice. It's like a big apartment, like a giant bowl. But so far so good, highly recommend this place. Um, also kind of weird hours, and it looks like they're more of a catering place. They don't have like a actual restaurant, it's all to go. So kind of like a ghost kitchen, but this is solid. <laughs> and then my trip was pretty much at an end. So I had to decide, well, do I want to try somewhere new or do I want to stick with what I know is good? And so I decided to do both. I first went to the Magic Pineapple Shack because I just wanted something refreshing. And so this cool little joint does smoothies and things like that. Of course, your boy went for a Lily Koi smoothie, literally anything with Lily Koi in it. And you're gonna just like speak to my heart. And to go with the smoothie, I had to get one last final poke at Suisan. Okay, so I came back to Suisen Fish Market, got my usual order, but then they had so many selections, right? And I didn't want to like get the same thing again and again. So I also got or their sesame shoyu that smells real fresh. And to prove that I'm here a second time, this is the smoothie I just got. I already gave my review on the Poke Bowl, not gonna do that again, but let's try this. Mm. The texture is the best thing. I feel like the ones like the poke will show you. They are pretty salty. So if you're not into super salty stuff, then it might not be for you. The only thing I regret is not getting something salmon. Because for sashimi, for poke, I always love salmon so much. And tuna's really good too. I'm not saying I'm a tuna hater, but I do have to appreciate the texture of the tuna. So much better than the poke at home. This one you have to get with rice though. I'm taking this home to eat 
So I don't have to eat it in my hot car. So yes, fair to say, I think the highlight of my trip was Suisan. But I recommend a lot of the other places that I've visited as well. The crazy thing is, it's all about timing. Especially if you want to hit up more of those specialty restaurants, you gotta make sure that you're doing it for lunch, and you gotta make sure that you're doing it between Wednesday and Saturday. I think if I knew that, I wouldn't have booked a trip between a Sunday and a Friday. But I am super glad that I was able to try the places that I wanted to try in those few last days. What do you guys think was the best looking dish I had on my trip? Make sure to leave that in the comments below. Give this video a like for the sake of my own sanity and for a reason for me to keep continuing making videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.